special. The problem is, when you call yourself an elite quarterback and you bring that conversation into the direction of why, my number one criteria is, are you an accurate thrower of the football? Particularly under pressure. No, I'm not talking about scrambling out of the pocket where you ain't got nothing in front of you and you zipping the pass here or there. And I'm not trying to say he can't throw from the pocket and he hasn't made good throws in the pocket. What I'm saying is, Lamar Jackson has yet to prove that he is an elite passer. And if you are not an elite passer, you are not an elite quarterback. Period. I think that Lamar Jackson is a, is a great, phenomenal talent who's a good quarterback. But when we say elite quarterback, elite with the quarterback position cannot be attached to one another until you can throw that football accurately under duress. Period. I really thought we were done with all this crazy talk until the regular season actually started, but mm, I was wrong. Yeah, this feels like a dream. So YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's engraving here with another video and hey welcome back again welcome back and this time this episode features Stephen A Smith and I really thought that after the whole Jeremy Fowler thing and he even tripled down on it a couple days ago with an article in ESPN but after the Jeremy Fowler thing I thought that we would at least be done until like maybe week two of the regular season or something like that and I know that's not that far away but I thought it, it, all this would at least hold off until then but boy was I wrong and Stephen A. Smith so he said that Lamar Jackson is not an elite quarterback if somebody feels that way, I got no problem with it. That's fine. Everybody's entitled to their own opinion. But my biggest thing, I would like to know your why. If you feel a certain way about Lamar Jackson or really any player, I love to know your why. I don't want to just hear you say, oh, this player is or is not an elite player uh, and then just move on. No, let's find out why. So in listening to Stephen A. Smith's why, he said, because Lamar Jackson is not an elite passer, not an accurate passer, but more specifically, not an accurate passer under pressure. And I thought that was very interesting because, and, oh, and then he added this too. He said, no, and no, no, no. I don't mean when he runs out of the pocket and then throws to his receiver. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about that because nobody's in your face. But he is talking about people being in Lamar Jackson's face, him being under pressure, that makes him inaccurate. So, with that, you let, please, if anybody knows, I mean, Tyler Huntley did it this past preseason, but besides him, let me know any quarterback that will consistently be on the mark if they consistently have pressure in their face. It's like with Lamar Jackson, again, still the same thing remains. People just do not want to give Lamar Jackson his credit. They don't. They don't. They keep bending and changing and moving the goalposts from left to right, back to forth. And they keep changing the criteria in order to make Lamar Jackson not a not good player. They keep changing the criteria. First is he can't do this. Oh, well, he needs to do more of this. Oh, no, he can't do that. Well, he needs to stop doing this. Oh, he should do that. Everything continues to change and flip-flop all the time. Now, we've seen quarterbacks, when they get the press, because he's. it sounds like to me he's speaking about interior pressure, when they get that pressure right up the middle. That is the easiest way <laughs> to just... Kill a, a, a quarterback the whole game. Interior pressure. Because no matter how fast the quarterback is, no matter how athletic a quarterback is, no matter how smart a quarterback is, if they are continuously getting that pressure right up the middle, they can't do anything about that. They can't. I don't care if it's Patrick Mahomes. I don't care if it's Tom Brady. I don't care if it's Lamar Jackson. If they continue to get pressure right up the middle, they're done. They're done. And... It seems as if we, we are still going through this same cycle where we have to try to put Lamar Jackson in a box. And if he doesn't fit this box that is a lot of people's criteria for a traditional quarterback, then that makes him not elite. Well, in my opinion, what is an elite quarterback? An elite quarterback is a quarterback that makes elite plays. Simple as that. 
It's no crazy definition. I don't go by, oh, you need to pass for at least 5,000 passing yards. You need to have at least this amount of touchdowns. No, it's a quarterback that actually, no, let me scratch that definition. A quarterback that continues to make elite plays. A quarterback that consistently makes elite plays. And every elite is not the same. It's not. Aaron Rodgers. Is he considered an elite quarterback? Why, certainly he is. Aaron Rodgers is the Hail Mary King. This dude, he will throw it up. And his receivers just happen to come down with it a lot of times on those Hail Marys. But he has continued throughout his career. He has continued to make a lot of plays. And I know a lot of people's favorite Aaron Rodgers plays are the ones where he may get pressure. And he may have to scramble around a little bit to the right, scramble around a little bit to the left, and then he'll launch it. Touchdown. Because he makes these crazy throws. And his receivers come down with it, and it's like, oh, man, okay, hey, Rod, we see you, homie. It's Tom Brady, an elite quarterback. Well, certainly. <laughs> I mean, what, seven rings? We ain't even got to get into that. <laughs> he certainly is. Um, now, Lamar Jackson, is he an elite quarterback? Again, by my definition, elite quarterbacks consistently make elite plays. And with Lamar Jackson, we've seen the elite plays come both from passing and running the football. And in my opinion, to define an elite player, whether quarterback, running back, wide receiver, whatever, an elite player is somebody who the opposing team has to game plan for and has to game plan for that much more. Does that, does that pertain to Lamar Jackson? Well, I would certainly think so. Something that we talked about uh, a few weeks back when the whole Jeremy Fowler thing came out uh, is that uh, it's, it's a pattern that we notice that it's the, the guys in the suits are usually the one that's saying, Oh, Lamar, he ain't that good at that. He ain't that good at this. He ain't that. Uh, he, but it's the ones in the jerseys that continue to give him his credit. And that's not a coincidence that that's the pattern. We see it. Y'all see it. I see it. We all see it. And we know it. And it continues to remain the same. Now, something that I was thinking about, too. Again, with, with every elite is not the same. Would you consider Christian McCaffrey an elite running back? Well, yeah. A lot of people have Christian McCaffrey even in their top five when they talk about running backs, despite the injury, of course. But why? Why is Christian McCaffrey in people's top five as a running back? Is he a good runner of the football? Well, yeah. Can he, is he good at running in between the tackles? That's not his specialty. But what makes him an elite running back is when he has the ball in his hand and his, his catching ability, too. Him catching passes out of the backfield, him lining up at wide receiver, him doing so many different things for the team at his position. But wait a minute. What about Derrick Henry? Is Derrick Henry an elite running back? Well, yeah, he is. He doesn't possess the same traits as Christian McCaffrey, though, and Christian McCaffrey's elite. But wait a minute. There can actually be two different kinds of elite? Yes, there can be. Because they both make plays. Derrick Henry, one-on-one? -on -one? Oh, yeah, nine times out of ten, I'm going with Derrick Henry versus pretty much anybody one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> Cause it can get ugly. Does Derrick Henry have the best speed in the world? No. He ain't burning nobody. But he got the strongest stiff arm in the game. So you see, just with those two examples alone, both elite players, both are players that teams have to game plan for that much harder, and they both are players that consistently make elite plays. Then thinking about wide receivers, Jerry Rice, would he be considered elite? Oh, for sure. Was Jerry Rice the fastest wide receiver that ever played the game? No, he wasn't. Now, did Jerry Rice have good hands? Oh, he certainly did. Probably used a little bit of stick him, but he, he certainly had good hands. He caught everything. But now think about this. Does catching everything, because this is, how you, this is why you cannot put people in a box. You can't. When considering people elite, does catching everything, does having good hands make you an elite wide receiver? Does it? Now, this is not a shot at him. 
because he hasn't reached his full potential yet. But Ravens own James Prochet. This dude has amazing hands, catches everything. But would he be considered right now an elite wide receiver? At this point in his career, no. But, but wait a minute, he, he has great hands. Jerry Rice had great hands. They have that in common. Doesn't that make them both elite? No. Elite players, they continue to make elite plays. And again, James Prochet hasn't been given much opportunity to do that yet. So we'll see how that goes this year. But Randy Moss, how, how about him? Did he have the greatest hands in the world? He actually didn't, but he had a crazy amount of speed. He would jump out the arena over like three, four, eight people at one time to catch the football. And he made so many elite plays. So again, this elite talk with Lamar Jackson, is he an elite quarterback? Yes, he certainly is. Because teams, they have to watch for him. And, and right now, I feel like with all this media talk, hopefully, hopefully, it works to Ravens' advantage because hopefully all these other teams listen. Hopefully the Raiders listen to Stephen A. Smith. And they like, mm, we ain't worried about Lamar. We ain't going to worry about him passing the ball. We ain't going to worry about none of that. I mean, you know they're not going to listen to Stephen A. Smith because the Raiders, the players actually play. They play. The defensive coordinators, they got to coordinate a game plan to really try to stop Lamar Jackson and his Ravens offense. And you know every single week, that team's got to go against Ravens and Lamar Jackson offense. You know they got to put in some extra, extra work. You know they do. Whether you want to admit it or not, whether you feel like Lamar's an elite quarterback or not, you know, you, you know that teams have to put in extra work to try to stop Lamar Jackson. But wait a minute. But if, if he's not an elite quarterback, but no, he is. You know he is. I know he is. We know he is. And just like Jeremy Fowler said, he said, oh, yeah, this, this is going to be the year that all these people figure out Lamar Jackson. That this, is, this is the year. This is the one. So many, so many players, uh, players that I'm not going to name, they, they remain nameless. So that's, when, when that happened, you already knew. Whoever may have said that, they don't believe it. Because if they truly said that and they truly believed themselves when they said that, they put their name on it. They put their name on it. But you know what? If a player said that, that's actually playing Lamar Jackson and the Ravens uh, over the next 17 weeks. If that player actually said that and believed that, hey, put it out there. But no, you don't want to do that because you know you will be embarrassed. There was a guy last year. I forget his name, and I, I think that he probably would love for us to, to forget his name. He was on the Bengals, and he talked about, he tweeted about Lamar Jackson, some, some crazy, some wild, some negative type of stuff. Um, or he tweeted about the Ravens, just period. And this guy was on the receptive end of a J.K. Dobbins stiff arm where J.K. Dobbins proceeded to run, like, I think over 60 yards for a touchdown on that play. But that stiff arm that the guy received, uh, he, he ignited that, that touchdown run. So whoever that Bengals player was, we appreciate you. You know, these players, they can act like they don't see a lot of stuff on social media and whatnot. But they see it. They see it. So in conclusion, with Stephen A. Smith, he just talking. He just talking. And, and I just, I, I really do not feel like. He had uh, any valid points in his argument. So we have to really stop trying to put everybody in the same box because it reminds me of kids and not even just kids, but it reminds me of students. With students, they may be given a standardized test. Well, all right, take this test. Let's see if you pass. <laughs> and if you pass, hey, you get an A, pass and grade, you get 100, whatever. If you fail, hey, we need to think about why you're not getting this stuff. What's wrong with you? What's your problem? So the students proceed to take the test. Some kids do great. Some kids do terrible. And there are other kids that just do all right. They're right in the middle. 
But just because some of them pass the test and some of them fail and some of them just barely get by, does that mean that they all have the same learning ability? Does it mean that there's something that that every doesn't mean that everything's right with the kids that got the hundreds and everything's wrong with the kids that failed? No, it doesn't. Different kids, different people, they have different learning styles. Not everybody learns stuff the same way. Does that make one person smarter than the next because they learn differently? No, it doesn't. Not at all. You just have to find the best way to teach that person. The best way to really get the most out of that person. And football, in my opinion, is the same exact way. Lamar Jackson is not Tom Brady. Tom Brady is not Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is not Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson is not Patrick Mahomes. We could do this all day, but you get my point. But all four of them, and there are more as well, but I was just using those guys as an example, but all four of them are elite in their own ways. They are not carbon copies of quarterbacks with each other, but they all have one thing in common. They are winners and they consistently make elite plays. Therefore, they are all elite quarterbacks. Shout out to Graven.